All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through part one of my three-part series on how to edit drone footage as a beginner. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you a video editor called Movavi, which I feel is great for beginners simply because it's really, really intuitive and easy to use. Let's get started. What's good, everybody? Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo. And in today's video, we're going through part one of my video editing series using the Movavi video editing suite. So Movavi is a very, very simplistic and intuitive video editor. And I would say it's sort of like a combination of DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro, but without all that fluff. It's designed with a beginner in mind. And because of that, that's why I feel like it's great for this series. So with that being said, let's jump into the video editor and I'll show you how to build a basic timeline. So when we jump into the video editor, you'll see there's a couple of different sections here. You have your timeline, which is right down here at the bottom. And then of course you have your add files section. Well, before we can start editing, we need to be able to add our files. So click add files and you can just browse to the location where your files are located. And this just happens to be the folder that I have on my desktop. I'm gonna go control A, which will highlight all the files I wanna bring into the editor. And I'm gonna click on open. Once the files are imported into the system, You'll notice that it'll do a bit of loading and that's optimizing those clips for HD. What I love about Movavi is if we go to settings and go to preferences, you can choose the acceleration that you want for your system. So my system has the NVIDIA graphics card, so I have NVIDIA chosen. Now, if you have AMD, you can choose AMD or if you have Intel, you can choose Intel, but it should auto select this for you right out of the gate. The other thing you can use is optimize HD clips, and this will go through and sort of pre-render those clips, making it easier to scrub through the timeline. I'm gonna click OK. Now, the first thing we need to do is add our audio track into our timeline. Now, one thing I wanna stress throughout this whole process is if you're a beginner, don't edit without having your music in place first. So I'm gonna drop this down into the bottom here. Now, once I have it dropped into the bottom, I'll explain a little bit more as to why I like to edit with my music in place. As we look through this clip, we'll see that there are peaks on these clips, and that's sort of what I like to tailor my edits to. I edit to the music, and you should be too. So I'm not gonna edit this whole thing because if we look at this, this is what, four minutes and 30 seconds, this clip, it's like a super cinematic sequence clip. Um, so what I wanna do is just trim this up. Now there's two ways to trim this, I can either bring my uh, slider bar to the section I want to trim and click the, the scissors, or I can just sort of slide it to where I want it to trim. So you can grab the end of the clip and sort of slide it wherever you want. You can also have multiple tracks in here. Now I'm going to delete that right here by clicking the delete button, and then I'm going to highlight, and I'm just going to expand it a little bit more, something like that. I'm also not going to use this end portion, so I'm going to slide and drag it. Now one thing to note, about the music is that it's not gonna go to the end of the uh, timeline. So you will need to drag your music to the end or the beginning of your timeline. So now that we have our music in place, we need to identify what our opening clip will be. And I sort of had one in mind. I think I want it this one right here. So I'm gonna double click on that clip or you can just click play and play it back in the browser window. But this clip right here, I sort of like this one. No, is it that one? I don't think it is that one. I don't think it was that one. There was another clip where I'm like sort of articulating around a building here. And I think it's, is it this one? No, nope, not that one. No, it is this one. I think it is this clip. Is this one? Yeah, it is this one. This is the one I want it. So I want the clip to start right about here. So I'm gonna drag the clip and you'll see it drags it all the way to the end. That's one of the nice things about this video editor. Premiere Pro doesn't do this. If I edit a clip, it's just gonna leave the clip wherever it is. And if I forget to drag it to the beginning of my timeline, I'm gonna have this gap in black space, which doesn't look really good. So let me go ahead and drag this and see. I like it like that. And I want it to start and stop right there. So right there. Let's play this back and see how this is gonna look. So I'm listening to the music, I'm watching the peaks because where that peak is, is where I want the change to happen. All right, so right there, I'm a little bit more. So what I can do is zoom in on the timeline to get a little bit more preciseness. And right about here is where that music changes as you can see. So I slid it over. So listen to the beat here. So right there. So now I'm gonna bring in my next clip, which is going to be this overhead shot. 
And the overhead shot, I want to happen a little bit differently. I want it to be as the pull up and as I start turning is how I want that to look. So let's take a look at what this is going to look like. And I feel like I need that to be a little faster. So if I wanted this clip to be a little faster, I just highlight the clip, go to my effects tab, and I change the speed from 100 to let's say we'll go to one. Let's go to 125 and we can enter in this manually. So there we go. We put it on 125. And let's see what that looks like. So it's just subtle enough to where somebody wouldn't know that I wasn't going that fast. The traffic doesn't look like it's blazing by. All right. So that looks good. I'm going to zoom out of the timeline a little bit here. And I'm going to cut this clip down a little more. So probably like right there. So now we're ready for the next clip. Go back to your media browser and you can see we're not on our media browser because we're on the effects tab on this clip here to go back to the media browser again click on this file plus icon in the far left hand side that's going to take us to the media browser and now we can choose our next clip and this next clip i'm going to choose this one here i know it's two top down shots but i'll explain what i'm doing here so for this clip what i want to do is I want to reverse this clip to make it look like I was coming down. Now notice in this clip, there's no cars driving, there's no people walking, there's no movement that would you know, otherwise be determined if I reversed it. Sometimes if you reverse things, like if a bird's flying or something, you'll notice that something's moving backwards or people are walking backwards. But in this clip, nobody's out here, so this is gonna work just fine. So how do we reverse this? Highlight the clip, click on the little settings icon and click on reverse. Again, you can adjust your speed and fading. All of that is available right here. So now let's see what that's going to look like. So up, down, and it sort of connects really, really seamlessly. And that's why I love doing that. So I'm going to stop it right there. Here's a peak right about there that I'm going to edit that to. Again, go back to your media browser. And now what we're going to do is we're going to find another clip to sort of connect these two together. So I think this one is one that I liked. Yeah, this is sort of a side view of that. And I'm just going to scrub over and I'm sort of panning a little bit right about there. So I'm going to again, going to cut that to the part I like. And what I love about this is watch this. I'm finding the part I like, which is right here. Let it go. And it just drags and drops it right to the left hand side. It's pretty simple. There's no like effort in thinking about, oh, is my clip going to end up where I want it to go? It goes right where you want it to go. So I'm going to watch this clip and see to the part where maybe I screw something up and I see the bridge is right there. How much of that bridge that I actually get in the shot? Let me see. Let's take a look at that. So I actually got a lot of that bridge, right? Oh, and then that's where it sort of got goofy. So let me go right about here. So I let that clip play out a little bit longer, but now if I wanted to, I could go to this clip where I was showcasing the bridge, but I don't think that looks very good. The whole idea is you want to try to find ways to connect, connect tracks uh, to one another. And I may not have a clip that's going to connect that per se, but we'll grab another top down shot. I think maybe this will actually look good. So we'll let that load and we'll press play. Let's see what this looks like as we play back. Now, this clip that I've loaded in here is a 4K 60 clip. So it did take a second for it to optimize, but still far faster than <laughs> from Premiere Pro. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I could shorten this clip up, which I think I will. I'm going to shorten that clip up. All right, that's looking good. And I sort of like the boats in there. Just gives like a little bit of like something different. And I accidentally swapped those clips around. No big deal. We can set that back because what I want to do is highlight this and I want to just drag and drop it. Like I just want it a little, little shorter. All right. So now that we've got that in there, let's grab that closing clip, which we're going to make this our closing clip. And I don't need all that. And I don't need all this, but I want this clip a little longer. So this is going to be my closing clip. Well, let's make sure that that looks right. Oh, see that bobble at the end there? I don't want that bobble, so that's why I'm watching that back. But I do want a little bit more in the beginning. All right, so now what I need to do, 
I need to make sure one, we make sure we trim the music to the right point and we fade the music. So we're going to fade the music by clicking the effects tab here, the little settings tab, and I'm highlighting my music track and I'm going to fade out. So by clicking fade out and I'm going to tell it how much I want to fade and watch the music track. See how it's like sort of fading a little bit. I want it to start fading as the towers there. Next thing I want to do is I want to fade the music in a little bit. There we go. So that's going to fade the music in. And that was simple. A 1.5 second fade and a five second fade out. And the next thing I want to do is I want to fade this out. So fading out is going to make it go to black. And I am just going to make it like right about there. Actually a little bit more. There we go. So by the time it fades all the way, it's going to be black. So there we go. And that was a really fast edit. I think that looks good. And I could maybe fade this and we're not doing you know any like crazy effects and we're not using any crazy transitions if you notice in a lot of my videos i don't use transitions barely ever and i just try to use natural film transitions like the tops to down to make everything connect and um that simplicity makes a great edit and i think this clip was a little bit longer but it was a cool looking clip coming over the uh, school so but everything sort of flows and connects the way it should so I think this works out really well and that's a good ending clip yeah that's really good i like that all right so now how do we export this video once you have your clip all designed and everything well we could click export but one thing i just realized was wait a second the music volume is a little bit too loud so i want to drop the music volume down to maybe 80 percent 80 percent is just going to make it to where it's not blasting somebody's ears out um, so set your music volume for your track to 80 percent then click export when you click export, you can choose where you want this video file to be saved to. I'm going to title this Mavic Air 2. All right. Next thing I want to do is click on advanced. And I want to make sure I set this to 4K. So I'm going to go 3840 by 2160. I'm going to set my frame rate to 2398 because I film in for uh, 24 frames per second. My bit rate, you can set a custom bit rate or you can just leave it to VBR. VBR stands for variable bitrate, which I find is OK. Now, I want the quality be, quality to be like at its highest quality. And I'm not going to touch anything with the um, with the uh, stereo. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to change it down here. I'm going to save this to my desktop. I'm going to hit start. So this is a 41 second clip at its highest bitrate. You'll also notice I am exporting it out as an MP4. Don't choose MOV unless you have a Mac. Um, and you don't need anything else. I think that MP4 is plenty fine for social media delivery. There is an option for H.265, but that's going to take a little bit longer, although it will be much more efficient. It may be more taxing on your computer. So let's see how long this takes to e export out. Right now we're at 30 seconds. Uh, this is going to be pretty quick. This may be under 45 second export. And bam, 35 seconds. And we have our clip right here. And let's go ahead and watch it back. So yeah, it looks good. I mean, it's perfectly sharp and it's a very acceptable Instagram banger clip. You can just upload this to social media and be ready to go and really no no problem. That was a super simplistic, easy way to edit. Now, granted, we didn't do any color correction. I did shoot all of this footage in HDR, but if we wanted to color correct or maybe add a little bit of flair, I'll show you how to do that in part two of this video. For this video, I just wanted you to get the idea of how to simply go through and do a video edit. Now, there are other options in here, such as text graphics and transitions that you can add if you want to do that. And they're super simple. It's just basically drag and drop. There's also a effects store where you can buy more effects to add into Mavavi if you want. But for today's video, I just wanted to keep it really relatively simple, show you how to quickly edit a video with the software. If you enjoyed, 
be sure you hit that like button. And if you want to see part two of this editing experience, go ahead and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss when that video drops in the next few days. All right, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed, whether you're a beginner or experienced editor or pilot. Uh, stay original. We'll see you next time.